It didn't start out good on Saturday. I got to tell you about this because I haven't told you about this yet. Brian, I'm talking you. I'm not talking the royal you now, the cult of Cornette, the people out there. I'm talking you, Brian, last. I have not even told you about that. I didn't even have to leave the property Saturday morning. I, I did tell you on Sunday, we talked briefly on the phone. I said, well, Saturday morning by 10 o'clock, I had screamed and cussed at somebody and banished them from the property forever. And by 7 o'clock that night, I was having one of the best meals I've ever had. And I said, I wonder what the people would think if they knew that. And you, you said something like they would think it was Tuesday for you. Just a normal thing. Just another normal Jim Cornette day. I, that's not true. I don't scream at people a lot anymore without sufficient provocation. But let me tell you about some provocation. You said so anymore. Yeah. You said anymore. Do you think anymore? That, do you agree that you may have in the past yelled at people without sufficient provocation? No, I just did it. I just had a lot more <laughs> constant and uh, numerous sufficient provocation. Because I actually associated with people back then. If you associate with somebody, anybody long enough, you've got sufficient provocation to scream and yell and cuss at them. It just depends. Or at least if you, there are certain people that might be immune from that, but if you just deal with, oh God, large numbers of people, like say in person, four or five people a week, that's a large number for then sooner or later, you're going to be screaming. Nevertheless, right, you know, I've been having a lot of work done. And that's why in your little snide comment in the open of the show, we were about to record this program about an hour ago. And suddenly the the painting crew showed up to pressure wash some parts of the house to begin the painting process. And now that my remodel is hopefully coming to a close, except for interior details, we're getting the house painted. And this has been planned, but not for today. And suddenly they show up and the the thing is running and the water's hitting and it's making all kinds of noise. And we were delayed slightly. And you're apparently miffed at that with your little passive aggressive commentary. Wasn't passive aggressive and I'm not miffed at all. I thought it was funny. Made me laugh. Thought it would make you laugh and it did make you chuckle. It gave me a little titter. I tittered. A titter. Like, a titter. A titter. I tittered. All right, well, let's toddle on. But nevertheless, so anyway, so I've been having work done, and one, and uh, you know also I've talked about this. I've had the Monroe brothers out in the yard. They've been working on my stonework and my mulch beds. They do a lot of stuff for me. I've been having the remodel done, but I've still been using the same individual and his gang of merry misfits that's been cutting my grass for several years. And the reason for this is very simple. Because I do not have room for a mower and all the apparatus that goes along with a lawnmower when my garage is already, I can't even put my vehicles in my garage because it's full of action figures and or things related to this remodel or whatever on a constant basis. And there's this one goof, and his name is Landon, and you'll need to remember that later on. You're going to be hearing it a lot. He has the truck's and the trailers and the mowers and the equipment and the stooges to come out here and mow this yard. And even though he does, I, he's very cheap and I get what I pay for, he's a complete imbecile. I mean, if it was rain and soup, he'd be out in the yard with a fork. And his minions that work for him, there's this one... One fellow's Hispanic. He's got an excuse. There's nothing wrong with being Hispanic, but it, English might not be his first language. But then the other guy, he looks about as English as a motherfucker can look, and they both will just stand and stare at you when you try to talk to them like you've got turds hanging out of your mouth. Then they don't know what the fuck in. They just go on to do what they're going to do anyway. And he's done a piss poor job, but I have the Monroes go over and uh, around and clean up behind him with some, but I've been using the mowers and the convenience of his truck and trailer, right? But this year, since we had done so much work, I told him, and I started talking to him about this a couple months ago, I don't want to mulch the leaves this year. 
I want to do like the big boys do down at the big house on the corner, the big new house they built down on the corner of the road. I've seen them out there, and I've read about this on the Internet, and I've talked to people. You blow them up, and you gather them up on a tarpaulin or one of these cyclone leaf rakes or all these commercials you're seeing. Do they have those commercials up there in the big city, Brian, for the cyclone leaf rake? I don't know if I've seen that one. It's where the guy is mowing his yard. He's riding his little riding mower. It looks like there's not a drop of sweat coming off of him. And you know he's, he's hitting all them holes and the mole runs and he's shaking his kidneys. But he's mulching the leaves and it vacuums them up in the thing that he's hauling along behind him. And then you just, it, it's like, it's, it's a vacuuming of your yard. You haven't seen that commercial. I have not seen that commercial. Well, you don't watch a lot of TV then. It's every third commercial down here. But maybe... Up there in the city, you people don't have wildlife and leaves and things. Every third commercial up here is a lawyer. And well, that's true. You actually, you got plenty of wildlife. It's bears. That's why they all want to sue. Anyway, I tell Landon, I said, Landon, I don't want to mulch the leaves this year. I got so many trees on one, one side of the house. In the back, in the corner there, especially, in a, the, all that leaf mulch from the last several years it has just stayed because it's so much. It kills the grass. It clogs the creek. It gets everywhere. Like they do it down there, I want to blow them, put them on a tarp, put them in a truck, suck them up, vacuum, <laughs> whatever you got to do, right? Right, you want to blow them and suck them up. Blow them and suck them. Whatever you, here's what I told him. I said, and this was one month and four days ago now. I said, whatever you need to do, get me a plan and a price. That's what I want to do. And you know me, Brian, when I'm telling people something that I want, I'm not usually an ambiguous person. I'm pretty specific, right? Yeah. So I'm t I am told this little weasel that I said, come up with a plan and a price. Now, if you, if you're in the business of cutting yards and he does the people next to me and he does cross the street and he does a bunch of other stuff I don't even know about and don't care to find out. But <laughs> what are you saying? Well, I'm saying other people's yards and grass cutting and things. He, do, he does this. This is not just some fucking asshole out for a fucking hobby on the afternoon. It's supposed to be what he does for a living, for a business. So if somebody says to you, this is what I want done, come up with a plan and a price. What do you do? I submit a plan with a price. A price? Yeah. Well, that was beyond him. Because that I told him that in person, and he left. And then two weeks later, I ain't heard a goddamn word from him on the phone. And he sends some new fat guy that I've never seen before, that's never mowed any of these yards. Not a new fat guy. A new fat guy. And he's the, But he's the only one I've ever asked a question of that I got a response from. The other ones, like I said, just stare at you like they're one of the fucking Darlin' brothers on the Andy Griffith show. I said, so anyway, he sends a fat guy over, and I look, I see he's mowing the yard next door, and I'm thinking, well, I've never seen this guy before. I wonder if my neighbor over there got him a new yard guy, and then the guy comes around and comes into my yard. He starts, now bear in mind, at this point, it has not rained in this town for over three weeks at that point. That's two, two and a half weeks ago. And the grass has not grown, and some of the leaves have fallen, but it's just enough to where if you try to, mow this all you're going to get is dust and you're going to chop up leaves and spread them everywhere it's got he's he looked like the tasmanian devil in the yard next to me all the dust flying everywhere the grass is almost dead <clears throat> so he comes over i gotta chase him down from behind he can't hear me screaming stop stop i tap him on the shoulder what i said what are you doing i'm mowing i said i'm aware <laughs> of that i said did landon send you yeah I said I told him two weeks ago that I don't want to mulch the leaves this year, that I want to blow them and suck them up in some fashion. He's supposed to be getting me a plan and a price. It hasn't rained here in over three weeks. Look at this. You can't tell what you've just run over with the mower versus the other part, except that you've chopped up some of the leaves. Let's not do that. You're blowing dust everywhere. Have Landon call me. I'll call Landon. He's pulling out his phone. I said, we'll do that. And then I never, he leaves. I never hear from Landon. 
So then last week, 10 days ago, whatever, I call, I leave a message for Landon. Landon, now the wind and the rain that we had for the first time in six weeks has taken the a lot of the leaves down. What is your plan for leaf removal as we've spoken about this, this year? No call back. Guess what I saw Saturday morning, Brian? What's that? I saw Landon. Landon and his stooges. And they showed up and they are out in front of the in the front yard by the road and they're starting they're blowing with these blowers. They're blowing all the leaves behind the fence and everything. And I'm thinking, okay, he's got a plan. He didn't want to tell me about it. But I guess and I'm looking around, I'm like, I don't see any tarps i don't see any truck i see his trailer with his mowers and he's mowing and mulching the leaves in the yard next to me as if when he comes over here i guess i'll have to ask him what he's doing and guess what he did he bops around the fence i see who i think is landing and he's on the mower and he's going up the fence row in my yard Mulching up all the leaves as they're blowing on one side. He's mulching leaves on the other side. So I go out there and now he's in the back and I'm trying to run catch again. And I go and tap him on the shoulder and he turns around. It's not Landon. It's the Hispanic fellow that stares at me like I have steaming turds in my mouth. And I repeat the question, what are you doing? And he stares at me. Where's Landon? And he stares. I said, "Land done." And he points that away. Apparently, Landon is over somewhere on my neighbor's property. Well, now I've already walked 500 feet to catch this son of a bitch. Now I got to walk 500 feet back to the house and fucking go get my phone. To try to call Landon, who's apparently somewhere within a 1,500 or 2,000 foot perimeter of me, because he showed up and he knows I'm home. The garage door's open. Lights are on. And he's still not decided to tell me what he's going to do about my fucking leaves. So I call him and guess what I get? Voicemail. I said, Landon, call me about these leaves or just come over here. And then I look out about 10 minutes later and there he is put putting up the drive in his mower because apparently one of his stooges has told him I was looking for him. And I go out there, I said, Landon, I've been calling you. What is the plan? What are you doing today? I see the guy over on the other side blowing. He's blowing the leaves out from underneath the trees. I see the other guy over here on the mower mulching up the leaves that we talked about not mulching. You're supposed to give me a plan and a price. What's going on? Well, uh, well we do a combination of blowing and mulching. I said, no. That's what you've been doing every year, which is what I told you over a month ago. We didn't want to do this year. And you're going to come up with me a plan and a price of how to vacuum or suck or blow all these leaves. Well, these are a lot of leaves. I said, I'm aware of that. Several acres worth. That's why I talked to you about this over a month ago, and I've been mentioning it. So you could come up with something. And he, uh, I said, what the fuck was your plan? I said, every third commercial that I have seen is for the Cyclone Leaf Rake. Well, those things are about $4,000. I said, okay, then I can buy one and stick it in my garage. We could use it every fall. I just came up with a plan in five seconds. This is your business, and you have not called me back with any plan. Were you going to, again, just do what you always do and not tell me and ignore all my phone calls? And then after the fact, you would think that was a good thing? Um, and hum, and hum, and hum, and hum, and hum. And bear in mind, <clears throat> I'm talking to you, Brian, to bear this in mind. I'm not telling him this. Bear in mind, this fucking idiot has obviously not made one effort to investigate whether he could rent anything, as I mentioned, or whether he had any, or whether he had an idea in his fucking empty head. Right? So as I tell you, and now that I've said all this, not only has he ignored what I asked for, not only has he 
ghosted me on phone calls. Not only has he sent people over twice to do what I asked him not to fucking do without telling me that he had put no effort whatsoever into figuring out what I wanted him to do, regardless of how much money he was going to charge me, I didn't give a shit. So he's a complete blithering simpleton, right? So I say, you know what? Here's the thing, because I knew I was vibrating. And at this point, I was neither cussing him nor screaming, but I was indignant. I, I tell you what, here's the deal. Today, the dogs got to shits. I've got my anniversary dinner tonight. I'm very behind on my action figures. And I'm standing <laughs> here in the goddamn driveway talking about this to you weeks and weeks and weeks after we first started and we ain't no further along. So when you figure out a plan and a price to do what I would like you to do, get back with me. Otherwise, don't do nothing today because I know I need to go because I'm going to start screaming at this motherfucker and potentially snatching him around the throat. And as I say that, and walk back in the garage, I hear him in his little droopy sad sack voice as he's meandering back over to his putt-putt mower. Well, Jim, I guess I'm just going to be quitting on you. And I stopped in my tracks. And slowly I turned, step by step, inch by inch. Actually, no, I stopped in my tracks. And then it wasn't slow. I spun around and said, you know what, motherfucker? I've been waiting for you to do that. I've been waiting for you to do that because you gave up on this job a long fucking time ago, you blithering simpleton, you fucking moron. Have I ever argued with you about money or not paid you? No, I would have paid you more, but you do such a shitty fucking job. Why do you think I have these other guys out here because they want to work, and they want to make money, and they know what they're fucking doing. They're not brick-headed simpletons like you and that cast of nitwits. I want you to get the fuck off this fucking property, and don't ever goddamn come back. And you know what he did? He got on his little mower, and he putt-putted the fuck on out of here. And now, in addition to signing action figures and blah, 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 I've had to call the guy that planted some stuff for me earlier this summer, right before the drought, to see if he could find a guy that he knows that could come over here and do the leaves professionally, which I'm awaiting that phone call now. And this little fucking prick can go piss up a rope and about got drug off his fucking mower and beheaded with the blades. So that's the way I started Saturday. 